Like my father, von Stauffenberg considered Hitler as the strong man who could save and restore Germany to its greatness and initially supported him and his policies too. Like my father, Stauffenberg swore a sacred oath of unconditional obedience to Adolf Hitler. I swear by God this sacred oath that I shall render unconditional obedience to Adolf Hitler, the Führer of the German Reich and people, supreme commander of the armed forces, and that I shall at all times be ready as a brave soldier to give my life for this oath. But Stauffenberg gradually realized that Hitler was not leading Germany towards national sovereignty, but into the abyss of self-destruction. The ruthless pursuit of political opponents was just the beginning, climaxing in war against the Jewish people based on racial hatred. Klaus von Stauffenberg, a conservative Catholic, had also Jewish friends. His own brother, Alexander, had married in 1937 Melita Schiller, a test pilot for the German Air Force, whose own father came from a Jewish fur trading family. Her work was considered as highly important for war, and this saved her and the Schiller family from deportation to concentration camps. During the government instigated anti-Jewish pogrom on November the 9th, 1938, also known as the Night of the Broken Glass, von Stauffenberg's family witnessed the destruction of the nearby synagogue in Bamberg. The synagogue, a massive structure, stood just 900 yards away at the end of a street. During the moonless night, an orange glow seemed to lit the sky above the neighboring buildings. The wind carried the acrid smell of fire towards his house. The flames were visible above the building. From the balcony, they could see the tower of the building and flames were shooting out of its roof. A lieutenant colonel, and later as a chief of the general staff, he witnessed how Hitler's regime used hundreds of thousands of German soldiers as cannon fodder in a disastrous war against the mighty Soviet Union. In 1943, he also gained knowledge about the Holocaust and decided to act against the immoral and criminal Hitler regime. He reached the conclusion that he must break his oath of loyalty and to follow his conviction, even though he was almost crippled by a serious war injury in Africa. The attempt to kill Adolf Hitler on July the 20th, 1944, with an explosive device, failed, and Klaus von Stauffenberg was executed in the early morning hours of July the 24th, 1944. His wife was imprisoned in a concentration camp, and his children given up for adoption. They survived and were reunited after the war. My name is Bernd Wolschläger, the son of Arthur Reinhard Wolschläger. My father was one of the youngest tank commanders in the German army. Like von Stauffenberg, he participated in the German invasion and annexation of the Sudetenland, the western regions of Czechoslovakia, inhabited mostly by ethnic Germans. There he met my mother Elizabeth and married her soon after in her hometown, Karlsbad. My father followed his orders to the bitter end. After his imprisonment by the victorious Allied forces, my mother and her parents were evicted from the Sudetenland and all found refuge in the house of the same man whose actions my father despised. My parents shared then the same house with the widow of the man my father considered a traitor and I later learned to admire as a hero. Whereas my father ignored the reality and acquiesced to the regime, Stauffenberg realized the murderous character of the Nazi dictatorship and acted. My father kept silent and von Stauffenberg spoke up. My father looked away when others suffered all in this name of the twisted ideology of hatred and intolerance. Klaus von Stauffenberg followed his moral convictions regardless of the price he had to pay. He was critical towards a democratic form of government and its susceptibility to being ruled by shrewd demagogues and populists. He was seeking to create a German nation by justice almost along the line of Plato's ideal vision of a state described in his political theory called the Republic. 
After the war, my father continued his life, even though he was initially imprisoned by the victorious Allied forces. He died in 1986 and received a military funeral. Klaus von Stauffenberg not only paid the ultimate price for his courage, Stauffenberg's body was exhumed, stripped of his medals and burned by the Nazis. His ashes scattered at an unknown location. Why do I tell this story? What did I learn from my experience growing up in his historic house? What did I learn from Stauffenberg's actions? That a solid ethical and spiritual foundation and commitment to act along those principles defines a moral person. Furthermore, that as citizens of any country, we should not blindly follow our leaders, but must critically judge them, finding the courage to object and even to disobey. Stauffenberg was not a murderer or tragic hero. He was a man who followed his mind and heart. His sacrifice reverberates as a timeless message. We have to honor his memory. He should never be forgotten.